What's up guys, Jay here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to do another tier list video. I really like the last one I did covering the biomes and so I decided I would go on to something a little bit more controversial and talk about the 23 different perks that are available at Deep Rock Galactic. I'm sure this is going to spark a little bit more of a reaction than the biome one and I'll probably be on some people's blacklists after this video, but hey, it'll make for some good content. So uh, if you guys are ready, we'll start this off and I'm going to go through each of these perks and give my takes on them and the way that I'm going to be judging them is based on their class variety. So basically, are the perks useful for all of the classes or only certain ones? Are, are they very generally useful no matter what class you're playing? I'm also going to go off of frequency of use. How often are they useful? And also I'm going to be doing impact, which is basically just do these perks do anything worthwhile or are they just dead space? Are they just not something that you really want to use? So we're going to go through all of them. I'm going to give my thoughts. Also, again, I just want to say that this is all purely based off of my opinion and my experience with using these perks. Just because I put something somewhere doesn't mean that that's where it's meant to be. Try to be a little bit understanding of where my placement is because sometimes I just have a different experience than other people when it comes to these perks. But if you guys are ready, then let's get into it. Also, don't forget, if you like this and want to see more tier lists in the future, be sure to like and subscribe to help out the channel. Now back to past me. The first one on the list is Beastmaster. So we're going to we're going to start with the active perks and then we'll go to the passive perks afterwards. So we're starting off with Beastmaster. Now, Beastmaster is a very interesting perk. Basically, what you can do is, is that you can charm or tame a Glyphid Grunt slasher or guard and basically make it into your pet named Steve. And Steve is fantastic. Essentially, this is a very fun perk because it just lets you it lets you tame a bug which is really really cool um and honestly i'm probably going to start off strong and put this directly into the a tier because this is one of my personal favorite perks to run is it insanely super useful all 100 percent of the time it can be but it's also a case of it's more theme over function in a couple of different ways, which is like the only thing keeping it away from S tier. Uh, but overall, this perk is very fun. It's very it, it can be very useful because even if Steve doesn't do a whole lot for you, he can at the very least distract the other bugs for you and give you a bit of an easier time. Overall, this is just a fantastic perk. It's very good at giving you presence. That way you're not getting too overwhelmed by other enemy bugs. And yeah, that's why we're putting it in the A tier right off the bat. Moving on to Berserker. This is a very heavy melee focused active perk. Basically what you can do is, is that if you use a heavy pickaxe attack and then you try to use one immediately afterwards, you will basically go into this frenzied state where you will have boosted melee damage and your power attack recharge rate is like near instantaneous. If you've ever done the Ebonite Glyphid machine event where it like sort of pops out those charges that makes your pickaxe recharge very fast. It's kind of like that, except for you can use it whenever you want, as long as the cooldown is active. This is an interesting one because I don't know, a lot of people hype this perk up a lot, but I I've never really had really good experience using this perk. Maybe just because I don't really play a melee focus that much. I mean, it's very good for letting you terraform very fast, letting you take just chunks out of the walls very quickly. But outside of that, there's not that many applications in which I've seen myself using Berserker that much. So I think I'm going to put it in the B tier for right now. We're going to move stuff around probably. But as of right now, we're going to put it in the B tier because it's it seems very useful, but it also seems very niche because melee combat isn't something that is super, super promoted in this game because chances are you want to stay away from the bugs that are hurting you. But it does have some usefulness. It does have some capabilities of being able to just level entire walls or terrains and it, it has its uses but i don't know maybe i'm just not seeing the power of berserker and maybe i just need to use it a little bit more but as of right now it's good but not the craziest thing in the world all right now we're moving on to dash now dash is an interesting one so what this lets you do is it lets you basically double tap the sprint button and you essentially get a super sprint for a short period of time this I think we're going to immediately put this in the S tier because Dash is a extremely useful perk because A, it is very universal. It doesn't matter what class you're playing. You could utilize this. Maybe maybe not the Scout because you don't really need it because you already are very mobile, but everybody else can really utilize this very well. It has multiple different applications that you can use it for. You can use it to escape, to close the gap, to get to somebody who needs help, to get to an objective. It's just, it has so many different applicable uses. It's ridiculous. Also, it has a lot of weight it has a lot of value in it and just being able to move very quickly uh the only problem is the cooldown is relatively long at maximum tier you have like 
think 25 seconds so it's not terrible but at the same time it does mean that you can't really spam this thing as much as you might want to but overall extremely useful very very good uh very very fitting and has just a wide range of uses so dash is 100 an s tier perk so moving on to Field Medic. The Field Medic is an interesting one. Uh, this is one of the perks that has a two-part system. It has a passive and an active effect. Passively, it lets you revive players faster, anywhere from 15 to 30% faster, depending on the level of the perk itself. And at max level, if you revive somebody, it causes all enemies nearby to be feared. What the active ability says is once per mission, when you're reviving somebody, you can instantly revive them. Basically, when you're doing the revive animation, you can left click or fire and it basically just instantly revives them. So you don't have to go through the whole long process of filling up the bar. So Field Medic is in a pretty interesting position. I think that most of the time this would be an S tier perk like that. I think most of the time this would probably be an S tier perk, but I'm going to be putting it into the A tier for one real reason. And that's that if you're playing by yourself, which can be the case for some people this perk doesn't really have a whole lot of value to it this perk is meant to be played with a full group a full team a full play group and when you are by yourself or you don't have a whole lot of people in the team then it kind of loses a lot of its value you don't have quite as much application as you can do with it because you can't really utilize it to its full effectiveness because you can't revive anybody so normally i would say this would be an s tier perk but just because of the fact that if you're playing by yourself it's kind of negated that's why i would say that this is an a tier but this is a very very high a tier almost s tier like whenever i'm playing with anybody really i always run field medic on most of my classes it's just it's so so useful being able to quickly get people up and the fear factor especially on higher hazard levels can be very very useful to get pressure off of you insanely good perk at least in my opinion now we're going over to heightened senses and this i'm just gonna immediately say that this is an s tier perk at least in my my opinion and my experiences with it this is another two-part perk basically what this does is that the passive ability gives you a warning gives you a visual and audio warning whenever you're about to be grabbed by something so this can be cave leeches the mactera grabbers the rocker trawlers and the nemesis i believe and basically what it does is it gives you a visual warning when you're about to be grabbed by one of them and the active effect of it says when you are grabbed by one of those enemies you can break yourself free so you don't need to worry about somebody else and you will kill whatever enemy has grabbed you with the exception of the nemesis it will not kill the nemesis it will be able to just break you free this is a fantastic perk to run whether you're solo or with or with the team with the team it kind of loses a little bit a little bit of its value a tad bit it might go like even higher than field medic A tier, at least in my opinion. But overall, this is just a great perk to run for safety, for security, for utility, for just giving you that that kind of comfort of knowing that nothing is going to just randomly come up and grab you. I have, this perk has saved me so many times, either by playing with myself or with friends. It's just it's so so good being able to just take out those cave leeches or those grabbers whenever whenever it gets you is just it's so so good especially for newer players this is a this is a this is a must pick and i believe heightened senses is available in the very first column of perks if i'm not mistaken so if you're a new player this is a fantastic perk for active perk to pick up on the first time so definitely definitely an s tier perk now we have hover boots and Oh boy, this is going to be this is going to be an interesting one. I'm sure a lot of people are probably going to immediately put this right here. I'm, I'm sure that's where a lot of people want to go with this. I am not as big of a hater on hover boots as some people are, so I would say it's probably a C tier. It has some applications, but it is compared to the rest of the active perks. It's it doesn't really do a whole lot for you. Um, if you don't know what this does is when you're falling, you can press uh, the button that you would normally use to call Molly and you'll just hover in the air for a couple seconds. So it basically helps reset your fall damage. That way you can save yourself if you're falling or if you get grabbed in, and pulled in a certain way. If you have like a, a sting tail that grabs you, it's very useful in that sense, but that's kind of the only sense that it's useful in. It doesn't really have a whole lot of applications that can be useful outside of just saving yourself. Like if you're a scout and you're running around and you just kind of forget how high you went up, yeah, this can save you. Or if you're a driller going through tunnels and you don't keep track of where you're going, and you end up just drilling through a wall into a big room, yeah, this can save you. Ultimately, I feel like there are better alternatives to this because if you go down, you can just have one of your allies save you or whatever the case may be. I don't know. 
I don't think it's a I don't think it's a what in the why would you category because I do think that there are reasons why you would take this. I just think that those reasons are very few and very far between, at least in my at least in my opinion. And actually, I am going to go back, change heightened senses from S to A, because think about it now, it does kind of have that same sort of thing that Field Medic has, although on the reverse end of it, to where when you are with teammates doesn't really have as much value because they can save you. So just a quick, quick edit here and hover boots going to be in the C tier, probably like low C tier, though, because it does still have a couple of instances where you might want to use it. Next up is Iron Will. Now, this is this is an interesting one. This is a really good one. So what Iron Will does is it basically lets you get yourself up when you are downed. Essentially, when you are downed, you can activate this once per mission and you will get yourself up. You'll be immune to all types of damage and slowdown effects. And you have anywhere from like six to 12 seconds, depending on how high of a level the perk is of just freedom to just move around and you're basically up, but just temporarily. So it can help you grab somebody else who's up. It can help you deliver an objective. It can help you resupply, which is big because when you are in that up state, when you use Iron Will, any amount of health, if you recover health in any way, shape or form, it will keep you up permanently. It's like a free revive. So if you get red sugar, if vampire procs, which we'll go over that in a little bit, or if you just resupply, you will stay up. So you can essentially get yourself up if you play this very well. This is a insanely, I'm even going to probably put this buff dash. This is a very, very strong perk, especially in late game especially at high hazard level play, because this can be so clutch in saving the team. You're, you're in tough missions. The enemies are insanely difficult and the whole entire team's down and you clutch the revive using Iron Will. It just, it, it is so, so helpful. And even in lower level play, this can come in insanely handy when something bad just happens that you're not expecting. Like Iron Will can just be useful in so many different circumstances, give you so much survivability. It can, it can save a run. Or it, it can save any type of mission run if you use it properly and just the ability to cheat death even if it's only once uh, is insanely insanely useful although i will say if you use this on a deep dive mission i believe i think at the beginning of every stage of the deep dive if you use this perk it resets the counter which is extremely extremely useful but yeah iron will definitely super super good perk solid you can never go wrong when you take iron will Next up is See You in Hell, which this one, I've never really been much of a fan of See You in Hell. I, I don't know. Maybe I just don't use it properly or maybe I just don't see the kind of practical applications that it has. But I, I'm not a really big See You in Hell kind of person. If you don't know what this perk does, this is another two part perk. Uh, basically, what it does is passively, if an enemy hits you with a melee attack, so any buck hits you with a melee attack, you gain a temporary boost to melee damage. So basically, it's kind of like revenge. If they hit you, you hit back harder. And the active effect says when you are down, when you're in that down state, uh, you can release a explosion of electrical energy that deals damage and uh, fears away the enemy. It causes them to run away in fear. You can do that, I believe, up to three times each mission. It's an inter it's a fine perk. It's good for survivability. I just personally feel that there are better options. Like if you're going to run see you in hell, you might as well just run Iron Will at that point, because then instead of just taking the enemy pressure off of you, you can just get up because you're immune. So the enemies can't hurt you even immediately after you get up. So that gives you the opportunity to if you're running Iron Will and Dash, for example, you can get up quickly, run away, find some red sugar or something, long make sure you look around when you're down to make sure that there's red sugar near you that you can quickly smack to stay up. I don't know, I just feel like see you in hell is very situational. And also, again, going back to the same reason why I'm not too crazy about Berserker is the game doesn't really promote or focus getting up close and personal with the bugs unless you're the driller. And even that's only in some certain cases. So in, in, in that sense, it doesn't really warrant or seem like it's pertinent to be close to the bugs and that close proximity. So I, I mean, I'm going to put it in the B tier because like it, it has uses, like definitely being able to do a lot of damage to bugs that are around you. If you're in one of those situations where you have like two Praetorians and a swarm of grunts around you when you're down, you can take out practically a whole swarm. It's very, very useful in that regard. I just feel like if the only time you can take out bugs in that high of a quantity is when you're down, you might need to change your play style up a little bit just so that way you can be more valuable to your team when you're up. But that's again, that's just me. But we'll put see you in hell there for right now. I, again, it's a fine perk. I'm just I don't know. I never saw I never really saw the, the value in it personally. Last up on the active perk front, we have Shield Link. Shield Link is another, in my opinion, pretty good perk. It kind of has the same sort of feel as Field Medic. 
to an, to an extent. Uh, this is another two part perk. It has a passive and active component to it. Passively, whenever you're within four meters of a teammate, you both regenerate your shields a lot faster. I believe that's right. I believe it's four meters. I could be wrong, though. I also don't know if it can work on multiple teammates. I don't know if it's just one and the other or if everybody on your team is close to you if you all have increased rates i don't know that off the top of my head i want to say it works but I, I could be wrong but anyway if you're close to each other you get faster shield recharge rate and the active component says that you can basically overcharge an ally's shield to give them i think it's like 300 percent more shields for like 30 seconds i want to say i want to say that's what it is it basically lets you super buff somebody's shields to make them even more durable uh, i think this is a very very good perk it's similar to field medic in the sense that it kind of loses a little bit of its value when allies are nearby so i'm probably going to put it close to where field medic is since it essentially functions in a similar way except for instead of health it's shields at least that's how i see it a very very good perk i run this with my gunner and i really really like it it's very good just to give your team that sense of durability again it's another perk that you don't necessarily even have to think about too much so long as you're staying close to your allies you're getting some benefit off of it thanks to its passive effect and the active effect is just very useful if you're in any kind of situation uh, where you're getting swarmed or you're getting attacked just pop the buff on one of your allies and they will certainly certainly appreciate the increase in defense so shield link solid a tier perk does lose a lot of its value when you don't have a team similar to field medic which is why they're kind of close together okay so that does it for the active perks so now we are going on to the passive perks we are starting off strong with born ready so born ready is a perk that says your unequipped weapons will automatically reload themselves after a couple seconds i believe at max rank it's five seconds this to me is an s tier passive perk i think this is probably one of the best if not the best passive perk in the in the game at least in my opinion because it's so so useful if anybody's ever played destiny it's basically the equivalent of your gun having auto loading holster on it you put it away for a couple seconds switch to your secondary after a few seconds you'll hear your dwarf say something and basically your gun will be reloaded that way when it comes when you pull it back out it will be ready to fire again which is insanely insanely useful the only real way that this perk is not useful at all is if you're the gunner running the minigun, the scout running the plasma carbine, and the driller running the cryo cannon. If you're in that particular case, this isn't necessarily going to be good for you, or it might be depending on what your secondary weapon is. But it's it's so good for getting rid of the downtime between reloads and damaging, especially like for someone like the gunner who has weapons that have very long reloads, this can help cut down significantly on the downtime between damage. It's just, it's so useful. I run this on my engineer, I run this on my gunner. I don't run it on my scout, but it's just, it's such a good perk. It's, it's such a very strong perk for just allowing you to keep up the damage. And so that's why we're putting it in the S tier. It is a firm S tier and yeah, that's where it is. Now we're going over to deep pockets. Okay, so Deep Pockets is a very basic perk. Basically what it does is it just lets you hold more minerals. It just kind of slightly increases your, your inventory capacity for carrying minerals. I don't want to say why would you bring this because I can see why you would bring this in some cases. It's definitely not a very meta perk. It's definitely something that you're either only going to run when you're very new and are kind of mesmerized by the idea of just being able to carry as many resources as you want without having to go to Molly or go to the Minehead or wherever you want to deposit. Um, but I don't think it's quite as low in that tier. I think it's a C tier perk because I can see I can see why you would want to bring deep pockets if you're especially on like a lower hazard level difficulty where you're not that worried about being super prepped and having all your perks laid out properly, I can definitely see, you know, it's it's easier. It's a lower difficulty. We're not doing something too intrusive. I'll throw on deep pockets. That way it just makes my life a little bit easier and I don't have to run back to Molly every two seconds. Once you leave that lower hazard level comfort zone or that new player comfort zone, you definitely should replace this if you are using it and just be more on top of calling molly of returning to the minehead or doing whatever it is that you're doing it's it definitely has replacements available for it for a perk that is very basic it still does it still does what it does very well and it still brings a little bit to the table giving you extra inventory is not terrible but it's also not really pertinent especially once you get to the higher level difficulties so we'll put it in the c tier it's okay if you're running it i'm not going to be mad but if you're running it on hazard level five, I will be very, very confused as to why you are doing that. 
Next up is Elemental Insulation. This one's another very basic standard perk. Not a whole lot to talk about here. It basically just gives you extra resistances to elemental effects, which are fire, frost, electricity, poison, radiation, and temperature. So like heat or cold. So basically, like if you're in the magma core or the glacial strata, kind of gives you a little bit more protection from that. This is a solid perk, at least in my personal opinion. I really don't see it. It's, it's not game breaking. It's not like play style defining or anything like that. It's just a useful perk to give you some more defense. So I'm probably just going to put in the solid B tier. If I'm being honest with you, like it's it doesn't it's not flashy. It's not crazy. It doesn't do anything major, but it does something that can be very useful. Again, it's kind of it's kind of in the same position as Deep Pockets, where I can see a lot of newer players playing this because it has, they see that it just makes them more durable, makes them harder to kill, and they probably want that so that way they can kill bugs easier. But not as bad to an extent as Deep Pockets because I think if you were running this at a higher hazard level, I still wouldn't be upset because, especially depending on what biome you're on, if you're on a biome that has a lot of elemental hazards, like say Glacial Strata, Magma Core, fungus bogs maybe i can definitely see why somebody might want to run this because it just makes you hard to kill but i don't think it's quite as powerful as something like iron will or shield link in, in terms of protection but at the same time i think that it can still it can still provide a good amount so yeah it's a solid perk honestly not a, not a terrible one to pick up if you're new and yeah it's just a solid defense so now we have friendly so oh boy this is this is a perk that is kind of interesting. So friendly basically just makes it so that way you both do and receive less friendly fire damage. So it's less likely that you are going to accidentally kill your friends and much less likely that they are going to accidentally kill you. This, I think, is going to be our first. Why would you? The only way I can see this being useful in any way is if you're like a new player that's for some reason trying to do hazard level four content right away or you're a new player and you're starting off with the driller and you're not used to the fact that his weapons are all heavy aoe but even outside of that like if you're playing on the proper difficulties that you should be as a new player um you should know not to shoot your teammates you know accidentally hitting them is different but for the most part like i don't know friendly just seems to me like a perk that is for a very, very, very specific set of play styles. And it's more like a crutch than it is a improvement. And that's kind of what I see a lot, like what a lot of these perks should be, is they're improvements to your play style, not necessarily crutches. And this is kind of just, it's like a buffer almost. It, it's very, very weird. I would never really recommend this perk to anybody unless you are starting off with the driller and are just not used to his weapons. But even outside of that, I would say like use this in the very beginning when you're getting used to it and switch immediately. So that's kind of where I'm putting friendly. Why would you just just work on your aim a little bit better? And moving over to it's a bug thing. This one is definitely going into the why would you look? I know I know a lot of people are probably going to hate me for this. I know a lot of people I know everybody loves to meme with it's a bug thing. I get it, but I just I, I cannot see a practical application. If you don't know what this perk does for the perk description literally says, for some reason, loot bugs explode whenever you get within a certain amount of distance from them. I think it's like five meters, I want to say. I'm not quite sure what it is, but basically all it does is it makes it so that way when you walk near loot bugs, they pop and they explode. Sure, that's funny. Like, it's definitely funny, especially if you're on something like an on-site refining mission where loot bugs just, for some reason, love to crowd around the oil rig. I don't know why. And it's just fun to just walk in a straight line and just watch them all pop like candy but at the same time it's like why why would you like loot bugs take two three hits at most to take out like there's they're so fragile they're so easy to take care of and it's just a case of why would you burn a perk a passive perk slot in order to just make it so that way killing loot bugs is just a, just that little bit much easier like i don't think it's that important to take out loot bugs that quickly and that efficiently but then again i'm probably gonna get probably gonna get reamed for this one because everybody likes to meme with it's a bug thing but i, I just don't see any much of a point like why like why literally why would you why would why would you do that why would you why would you replace a perk a perk slot that could be used for something like born ready or elemental insulation or even i would take deep pockets over it's a bug thing any day of the week so it's just a case of it's just why would you why would you do that and now we're going over to resupplier so resupplier is a very good perk this is kind of going from 
a really terrible perk going to a very good perk. In fact, I would say this is an A tier perk. So what this perk does is it lets you grab ammo and restock faster from a resupply pot. I think it goes up to 50% if you have the maximum rank. And it also makes it so that way the health that you get when you do resupply is more. You get extra health back. So it lets you load up on ammo faster and get you healthier quicker, which both of those things are very, very good, especially on higher level play. Resupplier can be an extremely, extremely useful perk because it just makes it so that way you have less downtime, you're less vulnerable when you're next to the resupply pod. It gets you healthier so you don't have to rely as much on things like red sugar. It's just a solid, solid overall good perk and definitely one that you want to grab if you do not have. Um, there's not really a whole lot to say specifically about resupplier. So it's it's a solid, it's a, it's a solid A tier. Next we have Second Wind. And this one is this is this is another perk that I just never really saw the point of. So what this does is it says after you sprint for about four seconds, I think you get, I think like a 10% sprint speed boost. I think it is you get like 10% extra speed after sprinting for like four seconds. So it just makes you that little bit extra faster, which is fine. If you are desperate for that extra mobility, uh, it, it it's, it's not something that I've really seen. Like when I first started playing gunner, I was using this just because I really noticed how badly the gunner's mobility was outside of his zip line. I was using this a lot to just move around faster, but you could easily just use dash and do something similar. And, and the speed boost isn't even necessarily that noticeable. It's not really that much of a speed boost. You don't really notice it unless you're really, really paying attention. Granted, it can be useful for, I like, guess, backtracking back to the pod very quickly. But nine times out of 10 in that situation, your driller is just going to be cutting a straight line to the drop pod anyway. So you can only go as fast as he's going. So I don't know. It's I'd say it's a C tier. I There are some reasons why I can see you being able to do this if you just want to get that little extra mobility you want to outrun the bugs just a little bit faster so you're not as prone to being hurt to being as damaged i can definitely see that being a case but it, it's creeping in on the why would you category it, it, it's creeping in on that so that's that's kind of where my point is if you want the extra speed boost it's there but if you also want that you could just run dash and be that much better next we have strong arms so this is another one where it's cute it's a cute perk I think it does have some uses to it. Uh, this perk basically lets you throw your flares farther. You throw them, I believe, 50% farther at max level, and you also throw heavier objects farther. So things like alien eggs, mini mule legs, aquatic gems, things like that. You can throw them a bit farther, which can be useful on certain instances if you're doing certain types of missions or just doing certain objectives. It, it kind of falls into the same level as second wind where it's like i don't really get it too much like the throwing flares especially like do you really need to throw your flares that far i mean i guess i can kind of see some instances if say your scout is out of ammo and you need to just light up lighten up an area for the most part i don't really see it in that regard but it can have some useful applications if you're on say a point extraction mission an egg hunt mission so i'd say mm, mm, we'll call it like low b tier because i do think at this depth this perk has some applications that can be useful but i also think that if they took away the ability to throw flares farther it wouldn't change this perk in the slightest i think it would stay exactly where it is because it's a nice thing to have just being able to throw things farther but it's not something that i am craving or that i felt was something that is that is very lacking but it's an it's 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 a nice perk it's not bad you'll you'll do well with it and it will treat you very well so that's all i have to say about that one Sweet Tooth. So this is the perk that says you just basically get more health when you eat red sugar. It's pretty self-explanatory. It it just gives you that extra extra boost of health. It's kind of it's 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 definitely somewhere in this category. I'm just not quite sure exactly where it is yet. Probably like I don't know, maybe like right around here. More valuable than these two because I can see some applications to it. You not wanting to go through red sugar too fast you want to ration it out through your teammates i get that but at the same time red sugar at least in my experience it's not like we're ever horribly out of it to the point where we have to ration it so badly if you pair it up with something like iron will i can kind of get that because you can iron will immediately get sweet tooth find some red sugar you can save yourself and then fill yourself up with health a lot quicker which that in that case i can kind of see it but at the same time it's like red sugar already heals you for a pretty good amount and it's already pretty plentiful it's not like 
there's any instances where you're struggling to find red sugar. I mean, there's probably a couple cases where it might happen. But overall, I think that this is another perk that can easily be replaced with something that can make you in a position where you don't need to get healed up in the first place because this is basically assuming that you're already down bad and you're already hurt i'd rather have something like elemental insulation or resupplier where i don't get to that point in the first place or even thorns which on that note we will be talking about thorns now so thorns is in my opinion a very good perk i i really like thorns a lot this perk does is it says that any enemy that hits you with a melee attack take damage back if you have this perk at max level, it will instantly kill Glyphid Swarmers, Natocyte Hatchlings, Natocyte Shockers, Rockpox Larvas, the Carnivorous Larva. All of those low health, really tiny enemies will die when they hit you. So if they hit you, they're just going to hit themselves and then die. So this is a very, very good perk to prioritize leveling up to the maximum tier early on because it's just going to save you so much of a headache in the long run because swarmers aren't going to be as much of a problem shockers aren't going to be as much of a problem so this is a very high one we're going to put this one in the a tier because i think this perk has a lot of applications that can help you out a lot even if it doesn't kill the enemy that hits you it's at least going to weaken them a good amount and it's going to soften them up so that way either you your allies or whoever can come finish the job and yeah it's just it's a very solid perk for keeping you more alive as well as dishing out damage to the bugs in a unique way next we have unstoppable and this is another weird one i do have to say so what this does is it says that environmental slowdowns are not as effective. So if you're slowed down by some kind of like the shock crystals and crystalline caverns, the radioactive crystals, the sticky goo and the fungus bogs, the, the blizzards, sandstorms, earthquakes, basically anything that slows you down, this perk will reduce the effectiveness of that slowdown. And another thing that it does is you move faster while carrying heavy objects. So like the eggs, the mini mule legs that we talked about similar to strong arm so in that sense it does have a good amount of practicality to it because there are a lot of missions where you are carrying heavy objects and especially through long distances so it can have some value there and because there are a lot of hazards in the game that do slow you down it can be useful in a lot of circumstances like when i go into fungus bog i always run this because i know i'm going to be in goo more times than i'm not in that biome or if you're ever in glacial strata or sandblasted corridors because the sandstorms the blizzards it's just nice to have that kind of extra movement speed when it would normally be very limiting so this is a solid i'd say this is a solid beat here if you pair this up with strong arm it can actually be a pretty good combination especially if you're running something like a point extraction where you're basically picking up and carrying a quark gems all the time you pick them up you move faster you throw them farther it, it can be a very interesting combo but i will say it's not as universally effective as something like say born ready or dash or iron will because on certain missions it loses a lot of its value because you're not getting the full benefits of being able to move as fast but still a solid perk i wouldn't be upset if i saw somebody running this provided the mission and biome were appropriate to warrant it so next up is vampire now this is a very interesting perk this this one kind of relies very heavily on the class if we're talking driller this is an S tier perk. This is 100% an S tier perk. If we're talking literally any of the other classes, it's high C, low, low B tier, maybe mid B tier. Uh, so what this perk basically does is anytime you kill a medium sized bug or higher with a melee attack, you are healed. It heals you a couple of points of health. It's not a crazy heal, but it does heal you. On the surface, isn't really that impactful because melee combat isn't something you're going to be doing a whole lot, but for the driller specifically, it is very powerful because the power drills count with vampire and so do the throwing axes. So if you get kills with either one of those things, it will trigger vampire, which is very, very strong. So in the driller's case, this is a very strong perk to help you stay alive. In the other classes cases, it's not quite as useful because you don't have that many ways to trigger it aside from just your pickaxe. But still, it can be very useful, especially if you pair it up with Iron Will, for example. You activate Iron Will when you're down, you get up, you immediately power attack something with Vampire active, and then you stay up. So you basically just solo get yourself up. Very, very good tactic. Very good thing to keep you up. So provided that the situation is not so intense that you're just going to go back down again. Vampire is a solid perk. It can help keep you alive. It can help top you off. I don't know if 
there's a combo between vampire and thorns to where if a swarmer hits you and then it dies, vampire will trigger. I don't believe that that's the case. I haven't actually paid attention enough to notice. I assume that's not the case, but if it is, that would be a crazy combination as well. But I do know that Swarmers are great with Vampire because you just, just take one smack with the pickaxe and you can get your health back very quickly. And in some cases, you might even be able to heal faster than they can deal damage to you, depending on the difficulty. But Vampire, solid perk. Not going to not gonna do you anything bad. If you're a Driller, I will say this is this moves up to S tier. But for anything else, everything else and in general, I would say mm, solid mid B tier, mid B tier perk. Not, not terrible, but not fantastic at the same time. Unless, of course, you're the driller. And last but certainly not least, we have Veteran Depositor. So what Veteran Depositor says is you deposit materials into any deposit point faster. So this is Molly, the Minehead, the Oil Rig, or the Drop Pod. You just deposit faster into those particular places. And also, when you are near any deposit point, so when you are near Molly or the Drop Pod or anything like that, you have damage reduction. You have... Uh, I believe it's a 30% damage reduction. Pretty good. That's that's not a that's a substantial amount of damage reduction. So this is a very good perk provided you use it well. And this has this also has a very good amount of applications that it can be used on missions. If you're on any mission type with Molly, you just have to make sure you're close to her, which is relatively easy to do in most cases. If you're on a industrial sabotage mission, if you're near the hacking pod, for example, you can just call Molly right next to the hacking pod because you're gonna need to be there anyway. And then you just have that damage reduction field around you while you are protecting what you need to protect. Same thing can be said for something like Doretta on an escort mission, or even if you're just in a normal mining expedition, you just stick with Molly the entire time. On things like point extraction and on-site refining missions, it's very useful because you're going to be staying on that central platform for a large majority of the time, unless you're going out to repair the pipes or get the aquatic gems, or what have you. So overall, this is a very solid, very good perk. And I think that this is also like a good A tier perk because there are a lot of ways that this perk can come into play. There are a lot of ways that it can help you. There are a lot of ways that it can keep you alive. And even on missions where you don't think that this is a viable option, it can still come in clutch and help keep you alive. So that's where we're going to put it there. And I believe this is going to be the final listings of where we have everything right now. So this this is my tier listings of all of the perks in Deep Rock Galactic. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I thought it was a lot of fun. I like doing these tier lists. I like doing these uh, kind of more casual sort of sit down and talk about my thoughts and feelings about certain aspects of the games. I hope you guys really liked it. And who knows, maybe I'll have to do this again when they finally update the perk system, because a lot of these perks are very outdated and could use some helps, could use some assistance to help get them picked up. I want a reason to run It's a Bug Thing or maybe even Sweet Tooth or Deep Pockets. Like, I feel like we're overdue for a perk overhaul, at least in my personal opinion. But this was still a lot of fun. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. And if you did, please be sure to like and subscribe because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I will see you next time for another video.